four days to go until the first Formula One race of the season in Bahrain. Max Verstappen looking to defend his maiden title. A week later, the championship moves to Saudi Arabia, but that race has been overshadowed by the news of mass executions in the country last Saturday. Uh, Craig Slater is in Bahrain for us, and we can talk to him now. Um, Craig, given that the situation in Saudi Arabia, do you expect any of the drivers to make a protest this coming race weekend? I think the drivers will have something to say. And yes, you, you, you join me from the interior of, of Bahrain here at the moment. It's blowing a little bit of a, a sandstorm, but we, we often have considerable controversy when we come to this region of the world about human rights, even though, and we're standing next to Bahrain's famous tree of life, this lone tree in the desert, Formula One likes to cast itself as, as a kind of oasis of debate, a sport which can water the roots of debate and perhaps seed change in countries. Questions are raised about the goings on uh, in places like this and whether it is right for F1 to, to be here in the first place. And we're not just talking about Saudi Arabia next week, we're, we're talking about Bahrain as well, that the Bahrain Institute's for Rights and Democracy, which is a, a London-based activist group, have written to Formula One asking them to reconsider their strategic view on, on taking races to this part of the world, and also writ written to a number of drivers as well, including Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen, asking them this weekend to, to make a stand again for human rights in this part of the world. The, the, the Bahraini government have reacted to this they, they've said in their view they have have led human rights reform in the region they think it's absurd to single them out and i suppose in the run-up to this grand prix it's what's gone on in saudi arabia mass ex executions as you say 81 men executed in total over the last few days well Martin Brundle, Sky Sports F1's leading analyst, caught up with Formula One's president, Stefano Domenicali, in an exclusive interview today. And he had this to say on, on whether it's still right that F1 races in Saudi Arabia next week. When we hear this kind of news, it's quite alarming. But I'm a true believer on the fact that sport has to make sure that, uh, you know, human rights is at the center of, of our agenda, together with the, with the country where we are going in. And I think that uh, if I do a step back, what we have seen last year, seen a lot of women, a lot of young people attending to the race uh, and enjoying for the first time an event that they never had the chance to, to live live, it's the right direction to take. The fact that we're going to be there, you know, give uh, the intensity and the spotlight around the subject that maybe without us would have a, a different place in the news. And these are young societies. It's, it's right what Stefano Domenicali says. 70% of, of the populations of Saudi Arabia and Bahrain are under the age of, of 35. So this exposure to different ways of doing things, this increased debate we have around Grand Prix, especially when high-profile figures like Vettel and Hamilton say what they have to say, will have an impact, no question about it. However, will that impact be a little bit restricted by some of the, the regulations the FIA have put in place around post-race ceremonies. Now, these are images of Lewis Hamilton at, at, at the Grand Prix in, in Italy, in, tu in Tuscany in 2020. He, he made a protest on the podium, but this won't be able to, to happen in future because drivers on that podium must remain attired only in their driving suits done up to the neck in future and they will have to wear team attire as well in post-race news conferences. So individuals looking to make a, a statement as Lewis Hamilton did on that day won't have that same means of doing so. However, of course, everyone is gathered here, still very excited and looking forward to the, the first race of what should be a very open season in 2022. New cars, all sorts of unknowns heading out of, of winter testing into this first Grand Prix. And this is what F1's boss had to say about how things might shake up over the early events. With regard to the cars, the shape of the cars, if you recall last year, there were so many people that were saying, well, we're going to have uh, cars all identical, all the same, going to be like a sort of F2. Well, actually, I never saw, maybe you have for sure better experience and, and memory than me, a season where uh, 
so many different cars were having so many different shapes. And this is something already very interesting because I believe that this will uh, enable the teams and the cars to be maybe in, cer in, some, in certain track very competitive and other less. So it gives us uh, another point of uh, discussion. Yeah, just incredible conditions here in Bahrain. A sandstorm blowing up and it's going to get more intense over the next couple of days. Uh, I think we have to be optimistic perhaps and, and, and take Stefano Domenicali's view that the activism will seed change, will help water the roots of change in, in, in this part of the world as well. That, that, that's certainly how F1 wants to go. They want to apply pressure to the places they go to uh, to try and spread the right kind of values and support human rights. The other piece of good news today on track regards McLaren. Their driver, Daniel Ricciardo, is now clear of COVID. He's recovering as well. He's feeling better every day, the team have told us. So he should be fit to compete for them in the opening race of this year.